I'm a visual scientist. I'm fascinated with what I think is still a big mystery. What is visual experience? What is going on in your head when you look at an object, like a cup, for example? The vivid image in your head is a world in itself constructed in the mind. The visual world I'm interested in studying is not the world that physicists explore. Physicists want to know how to describe what is out there, independent from you and me. They want to know how to describe that objective reality that they call the physical world. You may think that what you experience in your visual world is indeed that objective reality. In this talk, I want to persuade you that the visual world and objective reality do not overlap, as your intuition might suggest. But what is objective reality? When you and I describe a cup, we can perfectly agree about the properties of the cup that we can measure. With instruments, such as tape measure, we can determine the dimensions of the cup. Your measurement will be the same as mine. If you take enough measurements, we can send them to another person and that person will be able to build an exact copy of the original cup. The consistency across you, me and the other person is because we all share the same physical reality, which makes it objective. This is how 3D printing works and how we can make exact replicas of objects. Well, what happens when you're looking at the cup? Most theories of how the visual system works postulate that your visual world and objective reality overlap. Millions of neurons in your brain use images that form your retina to reconstruct all the properties of the cup you're holding. Their reality is accurately represented. At least we assume that reality is accurately represented because this seems exactly what evolution would want for biological machinery to allow humans and other animals to successfully interact with the environment. It makes sense, but is it true? Does your brain as a 3D printer create a neural printout of objects in the same way? If you looked inside the brain, would we find such information encoded by millions of neurons? A way of knowing this is to look at objects of non-physical structure yourself and see whether your perception is a truthful copy of what you're looking at. Take this object, for example. It looks like a bunch of square-shaped beings. Now look at what happens when you see the reflection in the mirror. All of a sudden, they look like cylinders. Take the lines in the middle of the rod. First, you'll be surprised to discover that they are eight feet long. But not only that. They also appear to shrink in size as they, as they recede away from you where you are. Also, the edges of the side of the rock do not seem parallel, but they look as if they are converging. When you get at the traffic light, try to estimate how big it is. I bet you never guess it is almost the size of a person. What is wrong with the balconies? Did they fire the architect? You may think these are very special circumstances and that I'm misleading you. But if you look around and try to judge lengths and angles of part of familiar objects in your home, not only you'll be off with these judgments, but these judgments will change as you change your point of view. My favorite example are these chairs in my kitchen. The angles formed by the legs are identical, but they definitely do not look like that. As I move around the chairs, the perceived angles change dramatically. Look at angle A, it looks like a 90 degree angle, but angle B looks like a much smaller acute angle. Not only do the physical world and the visual world differ, but the geometry of the visual world does not seem to follow the rules of the physical world. Perception can be a structure like this one, which are physically impossible. The rows of cubes that make up this triangle seem to be perfectly connected. If you take two rows of cubes, they seem to lie on the same plane, but each pair of rows seem to identify a different plane, which is impossible. Whatever our brain is printing would not be possible with a real 3D printer. So what do the physical world and visual world have in common? The ingredients the scientists invented, such as space, time, energy, fields, particles, and so on, are necessary to describe the physical world and to develop theories of how it functions. 
They are useful symbols for the physicists to model objective reality. But the way human perception organizes the visual world, as opposed to objective reality, is different. The mind creates ingredients necessary to us as humans, not as physicists. Colors, for example, are not necessary ingredients for the description of the physical world. In a sense, they do not exist per se in reality. They are creations of our mind, but they're useful because they help us to distinguish more quickly a tomato from a banana. Even surfaces are constructs of the mind. We think they exist in the physical world because we can bump into them, but they would not exist if our size was that of a molecule. Then surfaces would look like a cloud of particles with an immense empty space. However, bumping into things is how we discover the limits imposed on us by the external reality. When I grasp an object, as this car, the physical reality of my fingertips must overlap in space and time with that of the surfaces of the object I'm grasping. And in my lab at Brown University, we do exactly this. We study how action and perception are related. We believe that the visual world is shaped to facilitate successful motor actions. For instance, we found that the perceived depth of an object in front of us is overestimated at close distances and underestimated at far distances. Take this cup, for example. It only appears perfectly circular when it is at a distance of comfortable grasp. But there is more. In an astonishing result, we also discovered that the visual world can change if necessary. We made subject interact in a virtual environment where the length of the virtual arm was extended. That means that in this environment, they could easily grasp something that was farther away. After this training, we asked them to judge the depth of objects again. And we discovered that now they were seeing the correct dimensions at a distance farther away. The cup now seems circular at the distance where the new longer arm can grasp it. What this tells us is that the visual world is adaptable. It is your body that decides what it must be. If your body changes, the visual world changes as well. And this is the mystery. A malleable visual world arises from a fixed objective reality that is entirely described by symbols, such as distance, velocity, mass. Those symbols are entries of mathematical equations that precisely describe how they are inter interconnected. What the mind makes of this physical reality is something magic, beautifully described by the famous scientist Sir Arthur Ellington in his book, The Nature of the Physical World. Then comes the alchemist's mind, who transmutes the symbols. In the transmuted world, new significances arise, which are scarcely to be traced in the world of symbols, so that it becomes a world of beauty and purpose, and alas, suffering and evil. Eddington could not have been more eloquent. The mind does not create a replica of the symbols we use to describe the physical world. It creates a world that is meaningful to us, humans. The mind of a bug probably creates an entirely different world. The mission of a vision scientist is to discover the process of this creation and its function. Discover how the alchemist's mind, made up of trillions of neurons, transforms the cold symbols of the objective reality into the lively reality of our experience.